Hello. I tried escaping into virtual reality, but stuff still happened. So what's up? It's just too many dimes. A truck carrying dimes was burgled and someone stole 2 million of them. About $200,000. This happened in, I think, Pennsylvania. And, and apparently there were dimes everywhere. Just kind of strewn about the parking lot. Like officials were like, okay, it was clear they were just throwing it into whatever other containers they could. And dimes were found just scattered around streets nearby. So they left a bit of a dime trail. So there is someone out there with $200,000 worth of dimes. And I don't know what happens next. If you work at a bank and someone's like, hey, I need to deposit 2 million dimes, hit me up. There have been some big leaks. The United States has arrested a 21 year old who works as a National Guard Airman? National Air Guardsman? National Guard Airsman. Anyway, he works at the Intel division of the air part of the Guard. He is supposedly the person behind a massive trove of documents that was leaked onto Discord of all places and then permeated throughout the internet. And it had a bunch of information about like the US and who we're spying on and our position in Ukraine and our understanding of the Russian army. There are apparently very like weird conspiracy theory reasons why this person may have done it. I haven't seen like total confirmation yet, so I'm not gonna talk about it, but like, they're going to super jail. This is probably gonna play out for a long time, but Biden is out here downplaying the severity of the leak. And I mean, I don't know what his end game is, but I, that's what he's doing right now. Oh yeah, Biden, speaking of old ass politicians, two bits of crusty dinosaur news. One, Dianne Feinstein, 89, a senator, is still refusing to step down despite not being able to participate in her job for months. It's very cool how an 89 year old in one of the highest positions of power in the country is not even cleared to fly to go to work. Everyone's like, hey, maybe step down because like, what are you even doing anymore? What if your values would not even be held up by a replacement? But she's like, nah, I stay. She is apparently seeking a temporary replacement for her seat on the Judiciary Committee. Keyword temporary. Anyway, at the same time, Mitch McConnell, 81, has signaled that he'll be returning to work after his recovery from a concussion. This is, of course, a big L for concussions everywhere, and we're going to have to just wait until the next time that he falls to hopefully let him end. All right, let me hear it from the uteruses out there, because you're having a hard time. Last night at 11 p.m., with very little fanfare outside of a tweet, Ron DeSantis signed a six-week abortion ban in Florida. This is because, aside from being a torturous Christo-fascist, Ron DeSantis is also a coward. I should note that this law has not actually gone into effect yet. There is currently an ongoing legal battle in the state Supreme Court around a 15-week abortion ban. That Supreme Court is Republican-controlled and probably going to uphold the law, so... It's not happening yet, but it probably will. Also notably, no one fucking wants this. It is a small, loud minority of religious nut jobs who want to use the violence of the law to force their religious morals onto you, regardless of what your religious alignment is. That is religious fascism. You do not get to use the law to force your moral code onto people who are not members of your religion. If you disagree with that, that means you are saying that you are okay with using state violence to force people to conform to specifically your views. I hope this illuminates in part why people don't like you. Anyway, separately regarding abortion, remember that Texas judge that unilaterally made a decision to restrict access to abortion pills nationwide? Well, that's been like kind of stalled, but not really, like it's still mostly putting in the, the restrictions. But the DOJ is now like, oh, we're gonna take this to the Supreme Court. Don't worry, y'all. We're gonna fight on your behalf against this one random judge unilaterally changing the entire landscape of medical abortions for the entire nation for this state's rights issue. Congratulations, you elected Democrats, the equivalent of a wet noodle into a position of power. Got a hem and haw about, oh, it's just, it's just awful that these Republicans don't play by the rules. We're gonna play by the rules to try to stop that. Hey, what if the party that claims that abortion rights are a fundamental right did fucking anything about that? But if they did, you won't hear from it from NPR and PBS on Twitter. Very weird segue, I tried. Both NPR and PBS have left Twitter after being first labeled state-affiliated media and then government-funded media. What has been left out mostly in this reporting is that that label, beyond just being silly, also takes them completely out of the like trending tab and the for you tab and all that stuff. So it's sort of like a shadow ban. And so these organizations are like, nah, we're good. We're, we're just gonna not do that. I do not understand why journalists are still on Twitter. Like 
It's owned and operated by a man who very loudly says that journalists are the enemy. Do you have a humiliation kink? Speaking of the sociopath behind Twitter, he was wrong about murder. Bob Lee, the founder of Cash App, was recently murdered in San Francisco, and in the wee hours of the night, he was stabbed to death. Elon Musk and co. all were very quick to be like, ah, oh, the crime in San Francisco, these homeless people, they're, they're such a problem, and, and, and there's just rampant crime, the poors are dangerous, only I can save you. That was my, uh, that was my impression of of, I guess, Elon Musk. Turns out it was not a random act of violence, but was actually another person who also worked in tech that Bob Lee knew who murdered him. A man has been arrested who was apparently sharing a car with Bob and they got into an argument that spilled out into the street and ended with a fatal stabbing. I am sure there is much more to this story and it wasn't just a simple argument, but it wasn't a random act of violence. The news just really loves to talk about how dangerous it is outside. Anyway, rapid fire. New York City has appointed its first rat czar. They are making a Harry Potter TV show that's going to last 10 years and it's based on the original books. Like they're just gonna redo that. There was a flaming fireball of a meteorite over Maine. Microsoft is soon going to start rolling out ads in the Windows 11 start menu. We got another trailer for, for Tears of the Kingdom and it's really good and it seems more story focused and I cannot wait for this game. The Biden administration is proposing changes to EPA rules to help move along the sales of, of electric vehicles. I, I doubt that they're going to land, but like, Okay. Both of the expelled Black Tennessee Democrats from the State House have been reinstated by their district. And finally, remember Derek Chauvin, the guy that murdered George Floyd? Well, Minneapolis is going to pay out $9 million in other settlements regarding that guy's behavior, like predating the murder. I love when my taxes go to subsidizing police being able to just do violence at people. That's all I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe, share. Um, Hold, hold stuff in the wrong hand. My name is Endeavorance. I'll be back on Monday. Take care and be well.